I'm getting a lot of questions about culture and how to change it or, you know, people are stuck in a toxic culture, all those kinds of things. And what prompted me was a couple of emails I uh, just received in the last few weeks about this very, very issue. And I thought I'd do an answer for uh, everyone because it is something that comes up quite often. I talk a lot about toxic culture on this channel and in my content. So first and foremost, I want to differentiate two key terms and I'll address those as we go on here. A lot of people talk about culture. I would envision as a larger set of norms and those norms are consisting of how we treat each other, how decisions are made, maybe how emotions are had. Uh, I think that's what they mean. They're talking about that, that macro piece, you know, diversity, inclusion, attitudes, all, you know, all sorts of things, more on a larger organizational skin. So think macro. And when, well, I'm here to tell you that one of the best ways that you can change a culture is by changing what we call a climate. So what the hell is a climate? Well, a climate is more micro. So macro is culture, organizational in my context, and micro is around climate. Micro really is around your own immediate sphere of influence. So maybe that's your, uh, yourself. Well, there's a, a neat concept. Uh, you know, the more you change, the more of the things around you change, you know, self-regulation and stress management and all those other things. Also the fact that into climate goes our immediate team. So those direct reports for example, and maybe to a certain extent, our peers, you know, laterally, but really it's our immediate sphere of influence. Those that we have most influence over. So ourselves and, and our team, that's what I call climate. So I'm going to flip this around a little bit first. Let's think about cancer. All right. Don't worry. It's not going to be all doom, doom and gloom here, but you take that absolutely insidious, shitty disease. And how does this start? Well, first of all, it starts with one cell, doesn't it? And that cell is by any definition toxic. And there's, you know, without getting into details, cancer cells lie dormant and all those other things, but let's just take it quite literally. Cancer starts as one cell. And then what happens is it starts to grow. The environment starts to be conducive to more cancer, cancer multiplies and so on and so forth to eventually where the point is now that cancer has been allowed to take over certain tissues now, body parts, lungs, so on and so forth. You kind of get the, the idea. Well, let's flip that around. Let's flip that cancer and make it something maybe that's positive, whatever that might be. Maybe that's diversity and inclusion. Maybe that's empowerment. Let's use empowerment and autonomy because that's a huge job satisfier. All right. So you and you alone have the ability to influence those around you and impact the climate and make a climate of empowerment and autonomy. That means don't micromanage, don't uh, be disrespectful, the list goes on and on. So guess what? The antithesis of the cancer, the opposite of the cancer has now started. Well, just like the other bad one, the cancer, Think about it in terms of personnel. And we all have been around team members that have been deemed cancerous, been around teams that have been cancerous to an organization. So what happens? That person that's a cancer, they start to coalition build. Misery loves company, right? They start to want to bring others down, start to bring others into their world. And inevitably they do. They start to be negative for long enough that the cancer spreads. Well, we can do the exact opposite on the personnel side, on the positive side of the ledger. So let's use that empowerment. You yourself can be an empowering leader. You in turn can promote empowerment amongst your team, just as an example, or any other kind of toxic or non-toxic positive trait. So then what happens? Well, and then pretty soon the anti-cancer starts to spread. So if you want to think about it as anti-cancer, whatever that positive attribute is, so then what happens? Well, it starts to grow amongst your team and then your team starts to impact others around it and so on and so forth. 
it's a, a grassroots element and initiative and all of that. And it's slow. I totally get it. But at the very end of that is a multitude of seemingly disconnected pockets, if you will, of positive climate. Now, as you move up through the ranks, you're a leader of leader. This is where, you know, start to really cook with gas. This is where it gets really exciting because part of your job in leading leaders is to now allow the positive pieces to grow again, whatever that, that positivity is. So you should always be on the lookout for positivity or whatever it is that the culture, whatever culture you want to cultivate is look for that. And when you find it, feed it, give it information, give it resources, all of the things. So if there's a team or a department that seems to be excelling and seems to be showing what right looks like, give it everything you've got, give it whatever resources it needs. It needs support. It needs information. It needs whatever. So then what starts to happen is you're feeding that. You're feeling that positivity, just like on the opposite end, opposite side, if you're feeding cats or that will grow, guess what? So will positivity. So will the non-toxic environment. So it starts with that climate piece, but then if there are a multitude of different climates all growing, it's inevitable. Change is inevitable. So. As a leader of leaders, like I said, you start to empower them and then you, you connect them, start to connect them. And then your organization, then your culture starts to change. But I think a lot of times we get stuck thinking, man, oh man, this culture, that's never going to change. Well, if you think about it, think about it in terms of a corporate environment with maybe a number of satellites. Are you going to change the culture of an organization that's say multinational? Mm, chances are no, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's possible just like we're talking about, but it's unlikely, certainly not short term, but let's say that you are a department head or you are the uh, manager of a particular satellite office that can be your climate. You can affect change much more quickly in your satellite office than trying to change the culture of an overall organization that a lot of times you don't even interact with other people because not directly or have the ability to influence others. So if you think about it from a climate perspective, also can control, cannot control. That's another big part of this whole thing. How much time and effort and stress are you putting into something you can't control? Probably a lot. So if you introduce the micro, the climate piece, and this is a friend of mine, Pete Van Dorp's idea, then you can really start to feel more positive about your work. You're not going to have that pit in your stomach. You're going to be a little bit less frustrated because at the end of the day, you're going to realize there are some things you cannot control, but there are some things that you can. So your climate, which is your immediate sphere of influence, you can impact that. You can do the anti-cancer. And there's a whole bunch of other pieces that go into that, but just start thinking about it. Think small, think small. And like anything else, Change is difficult. Change can take time, but you have the ability to do that if you impact your climate and you recognize the power that you have to do exactly that. Thanks for watching. Curious comments, concerns, anything like that below. And if you have any other questions you want answered, let me know in the comments or reply email or anything like that.